one of the darker subjects that's come up, and I, I've seen this on a couple of websites, talked about on, uh, you know, like a couple of subreddits, talked about in video comments, but uh, is he a guy that's threatened suicide on multiple occasions? Like, that keeps coming up, and I don't know if that's legit or if that's just people exaggerating. Tons of many, times. many times. Lots he, uh, of times. He has gone so far as to show the bullets and the gun that he would use to commit suicide. He's um, taken pictures of the 45 hollow point bullets and tweeted them out saying, these are the bullets I will kill myself with when I run out of money. The rise and fall of a YouTuber is a tried and true tale, a storyline without many deviations or plot twists to it. It's a narrative arc that's become almost cliche at this point, something we've all seen play itself out thousands of times daily on the website itself. This three-act story follows a fairly typical formula. There's the meteoric rise. This is when the YouTuber's channel is starting to really take off. They've established a fan base that will follow them from site to site, a dedicated group of individuals that want to consume the content that's being presented to them, no matter where it's coming from. These are the people that buy merchandise. These are the people that financially support the YouTuber. They like and spread the videos that the person puts out. They talk about them in a positive light. They try to create a community and to spread that community to others. This growing momentum eventually accelerates itself into Act 2, the plateau or the lands of plenty. This is when the YouTuber has established themselves. They've reached the height of their popularity and their outreach. This period generally exists for two to four years. They've conquered the niche of content creation that they set out to do. Their word carries weight. Their fan base is rabid. And while the positives definitely outweigh the negatives, at this point in their internet career, that momentum and growth is starting to slow down. It's tapered off. Eventually, this leads into the finale, Act 3. From an epoch to a nadir, it's a roller coaster ride straight downward. Their audience starts to dissipate and disappear, sometimes through actions of their own and sometimes regrettably because their content is no longer appealing, it's no longer fresh or new. Somebody else has come along and done it better than they ever did. This is typically the point where the YouTuber, the internet celebrity, starts to experience a depression, knowing that they'll never achieve what they once had. And every day that goes on, from moment to moment, they get further and further away from that success they once coveted. The majority of us that watch videos on YouTube, that subscribe to certain channels or watch certain content, have all witnessed this happen probably personally at least a few times. I bet if you were to take a moment and really think about it, you'd start to have names pop into your head, and those names might be the ones that are spread the most. But as you give it a little bit of a think, as you really take a moment to look back on the people you used to watch, more and more names are going to come to the forefront. Some of those content creators might have pushed you away through their actions or behaviors, but others you probably simply lost an interest in, or completely forgot actually made content that you used to watch on a daily basis. And Wings of Redemption would be one of those names. He would be a person that has gone through this three-act story. In fact, he's so far past the finale, we're in the credit sequence, playing at the very tail end of the film. Now with this video, I'm not going to present a chronological retelling of the rise and fall of Wings of Redemption. As I said, it's a story we're all familiar with. There's nothing that I can tell you that's going to be a surprise. Instead, what I want to focus on are key aspects of his personality, his behaviors online, how he treats those around him, from his friends to his fan base, that either came about as a result of his decline or helped contribute to it. Because when you study Wings of Redemption, when you really look into who this individual is and what happened to them, it paints a very bleak picture. I tried to talk to Woody. Woody ignored me. I asked him if he wanted to do a Woody and Wink show again. Because I figured at least that would get enough viewers that would hide the hate. And it'd make me feel good about my channel. And maybe it, it could kickstart me into making YouTube videos again. But like Woody straight ignored it. Online friendships, even more than their real world counterparts, are built upon tenuous and shaky grounds. Even meeting a person who you know through the internet from time to time will hold less weight with you than those that are personally in your life. The people that you interact with on a daily basis, those that live around you, those that you've grown up with. These fragile relationships can fall apart over the simplest of fracture points. They can fray away one day you're close with somebody and the next you no longer speak with them. I want you to imagine yourself undertaking a certain endeavor. You are a already established YouTuber. You've tapped into a newly emerging market. You're one of the first people to gain a significant audience doing what it is that you're doing. Just to give like the broad strokes of this gentleman, he was mm -hmm. he was quite big in the in the days of Call of Duty commentary. I don't know. Are you familiar with Call of Duty commentaries? 
and yeah. what a big scene that was at one point. He was one of the first, and by I mean like one of the first 25 people on the planet who did it. And at, at that time, it really didn't matter about the quality of your content as much as it did the quantity of your content because it was a limited supply of it out there. Mm -hmm. Today, you go on YouTube and find endless hours and hours of this stuff. But back then, especially if you wanted late-breaking, newest COD content, there were only a handful of guys who were doing it, and he was one of them. And one day, you decide that you were going to create something new. You are going to bring in a couple of people that you know. Now, you're the top dog of the group, the alpha male e-celebrity in your little circle. You're much more popular than the other people. You're making way more money than they are making at the moment. At the time, he was making much more money than Woody or I. Woody and I, would, we would, you know, we'd count up our money that we had earned at the end of the month and be like, ah, man, I, maybe... I learned this much by the end of the Five year. I was like, holy shit. Five thousand a year. Yeah, it was like, yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. You know, it's it's like, ah, oh, this is a, this is a fun hobby. I basically get my video games for free, sort of sort of thing that we were doing. Wings was making ten thousand dollars a month at this early juncture, and we were blown away by it. And so you go about creating this new thing with them. You put together a podcast. You call it Painkiller Already. There's Woody and there's Kyle, and they're coming along with you. You the Big guy, the person with a large audience, the person whose videos are watched by a huge community. But as time goes on, as you experience that three-act play that we talked about in the opening, as that storyline unfolds, you begin to notice something. You begin to notice that your two compatriots, they've got stories of their own. And unlike yours, the duration of events that they're undertaking and the heights that they're reaching far surpass what you had. Imagine the animosity that would grow inside of you. When you think about it, most people don't begrudge others their own success. But there is a point where that changes. You're probably not upset at the person that wins the lottery, that gets the big payout, that becomes the millionaire or the billionaire, because there is a distance between you and them, and it doesn't enter into your real world. You're not thinking about it on a constant basis. But if it was your neighbor that was the winner, if it was a person that shops at the same place you shop at, if it's a person that bought that ticket at the same grocery store or gas station that you go to, you start to think about the missed opportunity. That should have been your money. You should have played those numbers. It's the proximity of somebody's success that breeds jealousy. So there you are, hosting your podcast with your two co-hosts who are now gaining popularity that is surpassing your own. Now, how do you think that's going to affect your interactions with them? What sort of frame of mind do you think that's going to put you in? Without Wings himself ever giving us his insight into this, and it's doubtful we'll ever get that, let alone honest insight, we'd be better served by looking at different examples of his relationship with them, his ungratefulness, and his backstabbing nature towards his co-host, people that are trying to help him out to really understand what led to the end. Now, one prime example of that would be the weight loss challenge that Wings embarked upon. This was a concept that Kyle and he had come up with. It was something that was going to reinvigorate his dying channel. It was going to bring in new viewers. It was going to get his fan base reinvested in what he did. The premise was very straightforward. Wings was going to stay at Kyle's house. They were going to do a 30-day workout routine. They'd create the exercises. They would manage his diet. They would help with calories in and calories out. They would get him through this rough patch in his life. So what could possibly go wrong with this? Well, as it turns out, a lot of things. That month was one of the worst months of my life because Wings lives within his own bubble. He doesn't socialize, and so he doesn't curtail himself to social norms. Right away, myself, my roommate Kitty, and my girlfriend were in my kitchen, and the bathroom is visible from the kitchen. And we hear this noise of water flowing into more water. And we all look up ponderously, and the bathroom door is agape, and Wings is pissing. And we, <laughs> and we can see most of him. I couldn't see the penis, nor could he. I can't see my penis at all. Only time I can see it's like in a mirror. It would seem that Kyle learned quite a few things about Wings very quickly during this extended sleepover at his house. Namely, that Wings didn't really have much of a social awareness. He didn't really take in to account what other people would be comfortable with. He wasn't very motivated. He wasn't very grateful for the help he'd been offering. And he was very apt to offer excuses for why he couldn't do things. All I'm hearing so far is, you know, like, this, oh, here's a problem, all here's your, a problem, all you're here's hearing a problem. Are, all you're hearing are excuses, and that, yeah. that's another talk. Like, me and Wings have had a lot, about three, like, major talks like this. We talked about work ethic, we talked about half-assing things, and we also talked about 
um, excuses. That was the third one. That was the third talk we had. And I said that you are always able to come up with an excuse why you can't do something. You're a master of it. You can come up with an excuse why you cannot do anything I could I could possibly name. But I have never seen you come up with um, a reason why you can do something. This becomes all the more ridiculous when you take into account the amount of money that Kyle spent to accommodate Wing's stay with him, going so far as to remodel his bathroom. And so that night I was uh, taking my taking a shower in my shower after the show, and and uh, I was washing my hair, and I bumped my elbow on the shower wall, and I was like, God, the shower is a little narrow. And then it occurred to me, Wings of Redemption could not fit into my shower. <laughs> and if he was going to live with me, we would have to put in a new shower. So construction began the next day on a $5,000 shower. <laughs> $5,000. Not only are you letting Wings stay at your place, not only are you managing his exercise and you're paying for his food and you're trying to accommodate and help him out, you spend five grand remodeling your bathroom. For what? To put on a nature documentary. How do you like a behind-the-scenes look at one of nature's most luxurious, full-service hippo spas? And if the bathroom remodeling wasn't enough, don't forget the bed that he broke almost immediately upon showing up. The first night, he broke the bed in, in, in the room. It wasn't a bed, to be fair. It was a futon because it was a guest bedroom, and I had never had a guest in there before. And so there was a futon, you know, a, a couch that folds out into a bed. Mm -hmm. And I had slept on it once before. Like, I, I, I was like, ah, let's break this in. And I fucked my girlfriend on it. And it wasn't bad. It was pretty comfy. He broke it. So with that much capital invested, with that much time and effort put into it, did he stick to it? Did he work on it? Did he take the advice that he was offered by his friends who were trying to help him out in a time of need? Of course not. There aren't many people in your situation that would be so stubborn as no. to turn down something no. like this. No, it's shocking. I don't know of anyone who has tens of thousands of people rooting for him who can sit there and say, yeah, well, opening a yogurt is just too much effort. <laughs> I don't like yogurt. I don't like it. And then you don't no, make me just wait, You're wait, picking wait. on it. I don't backwards. like it either. You've got tens of thousands of people cheering you on. And in response, you're like, ah, oh, fuck yogurt. Even with the money raised. And we set up an Indiegogo and raised him $10,000 cash. He still found a way to completely fuck this up. And it doesn't end there because... Of course, Wings being a big guy, not used to exercise, not used to a different sort of diet, we had trouble pooping. He didn't shit for a week. I mean, I didn't poop for the first five days. Looks like it's time to have good old grandma fly on down so she can fish that crap right out of his shitter. So one of the worst feelings I've ever had in my life. I mean, the only other feeling that I could even contemplate with that would be the time I was constipated and the turd went sideways on me. <laughs> <laughs> like a... Um, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> let, me, let me tell let me tell the story. I had a really bad bout of constipation, and this was when I was on my diet in early 2011. I, w I started doing Slim Fast to replace my lunches. One thing I didn't learn about Slim Fast is it dehydrates you really, really badly. Like you have to drink a lot of water when you're on Slim Fast when you're placing it as meals, and I didn't do that, so I got dehydrated really bad. I'm talking about three or four turds deep. Like it just hurt to walk. So I, I feared pooping for about a week. So what I did is I ended up going to get a saline enema. And um, I had my grandma give me a saline enema. And it softened it up enough to pass, but it only got a little bit. So, like, it softened, like, the first three-fourths of a turd. <laughs> so I get on the toilet, and a saline enema, like, stimulates the muscles to actually make it come out. So I do it. It goes, <laughs> and then that little piece, probably about this big, hits it, and turns like that and it spreads my butthole wide open. <laughs> I fall off the toilet and I hit my head onto the wall and I call out for my grandma. I'm like, you might have to take me to the hospital. Well, what we ended up doing is she ended up sticking her finger up my button and mashing the turd up. But at least the fans are keeping the dream alive. They understand how much he appreciates poop. That's why they mail it to him. <laughs> one, one whole dollar. One. Oh, one dollar. One whole dollar smeared in shit. There you go, buddy. We love you. We support you.
And of course, looking at those wrinkly hands, it looks like Grandma's the one holding the letter. God knows she's used to dealing with shit. Now, after this disastrous attempt at getting his life sorted out, getting him into an exercise routine, getting him onto a diet that would help facilitate his weight loss, raising him money so he could use it for his financial needs and for a potential surgery, all Wings really did after that was walk around a little bit. Video after video of 5-10 to ten minute walks acting like that was some kind of a dedication towards his weight loss goal. But this wouldn't be the last time that Wings would take for granted the efforts of his friends, that he would sort of cast it aside without really giving it any thought. There was a trip that they had planned to do, a trip they were going to take into the wilderness together. Somehow it came up, hey, let's do a survival trip. Let's go out into the wilderness, the three of us, and uh, let's see let's see how we, how we fare. Leading up to it, we're making videos, talking about it. Like, one of the things was that we kind of got fixated on was starting fires with flint and steel. And so I made a quick video on one of my YouTube channels of me in my backyard making a fire with flint and steel. You know, it's it's a little annoying at first, but once you get the the the, the knack of it, you can do it. Wings made four videos of him making fire with flint and steel and never accomplished it. Son of a bitch. And so I set out on this quite long drive. I'm going to say it's four and a half, five and a half hours from where I lived at the time to where we're doing this thing. So if I leave the night before, I'm going to get a, a motel room in the area 30 minutes from the meetup location. And uh, that way I don't have to drive you know, early in the morning. I don't want to leave my house at 5 a.m., get there at 10 a.m. and be already just kind of out of it before we begin hiking and surviving and such. So I'm driving in the night before, and I think to myself, hey, let me give old Wings a call, make sure we're all good to go here, you know, because it's, it's Wings. Call him up, say, hey, man, you get ready to do this thing. I'm, I'm driving in now, about three hours from the place. What, what are you up to? You know, you could leave, if you left right now, you'd be here around 11, and, uh, you know, you could, you could share this motel room with me. I, I, could get, I could get a room with two beds or something. He's like, I'm not going. What? What, what, what do you mean? I, I'm not coming. So there's Woody, and there's Kyle. They're psyched for their outdoor adventure. Wings is going to come along after shit-talking the other person that wasn't really up to doing it. Three buddies out in the woods going to have a great time, maybe get a little content out of it. And what happens? He doesn't even do them the courtesy of calling to say, I can't make it. He doesn't tell them ahead of time that he has no interest in it. He merely lets them show up, and then he decides, I don't want to do it. Obviously, I didn't show up on... I didn't go to the PK survival trip today. And I've seen people... Tell me, like, oh, why don't you go now? Go now. Do it. Dude, that's not an option. Maybe you're starting to notice a bit of a pattern here. A lack of will. An inability to commit to something, to find any excuse to not have to do something. A lack of constitution. Um, this is the end of the day three video. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about constitution. One of the things that really changed during this last uh, week or so about me is noticing how lack of the constitution I actually have. His failure to commit to this trip was just one thing in a long line of things that ended up fracturing the relationship. But I think the most damaging one would be what he did to Woody. It's one thing to bail out of a commitment to a trip. It's another thing to let your friend put in a large financial investment and time and effort to help you lose weight and then flip-flop and walk away from it. It's another thing entirely to financially support somebody that is attacking your friend's child. Let me read this out before you go into the story. Maybe you, <laughs> maybe you can tell me if this is accurate or not. Uh, it's a, and this was, I believe, from 2014 or 2015. Earlier this year, it was revealed that he worked as a double agent helping a YouTube troll attack a 10-year-old autistic son of one of his friends. Is he? Is that talking about you? Is that, that sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So, so this guy, the, the one that you know challenged me to fight him, and we organized mm -hmm. it. Uh, he also would like. He'd be like, give me money. I want to go to Europe, or I want to do this, or I want a car. I don't know what he wanted money for, and Wings donated to him. And I felt like that, like for me, that was a real betrayal, right? This is a guy who doesn't just attack me. He attacks my wife and my children. Wait, no, say, say, I'm sorry, say that again. So the guy that's screwing with you and your family, he gave him money? Yes. Yeah, via PayPal. Why? He Because this dude that was attacking Woody's family, uh, obviously Jesus, his, his channel was named. He also, like, 
as like a, a different thing, not related to Woody, was like, oh, I really, you know, I'm feeling depressed and I'm all, you know, in a bad headspace. It would, I would feel really way better if I could go on like a three week, no thinking about anything European vacation. So donate to my European vacation. Oh, also, I need a new gaming PC. That would really pull me out of this funk. And so that's basically what he was doing, that, e-begging that, that, for No, no, that makes, that makes no fucking sense. You guys were doing a show together at the time, yeah? We were friends. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're friends with him, and you're doing a show together, and the guy that's fucking with you, he gives him money. Yeah, that's not the yes. only one. You know, yeah. There was another guy. His name was Thunder Toro. And uh, Thunder's channel is doing well at this point, but he hates me. He hates me, I think, because he was a better gamer than me, but I was more successful on YouTube. And I think that's the core of it. Like, I never talked to him or anything. And uh, he uploaded a video where his friend said that my son was a fucking faggot that jerked off dogs. And uh, and I didn't like it, you know, so I uploaded a response. Well, yeah, it's understandable. <laughs> and I gave that comment that. two thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> Wings, on the other hand, was giving him like search engine optimization, optimization advice and, and like how to grow his channel. And he was doing really well. And Wings took some credit. Oh, but you know what? Fuck, fuck this guy then. How is he going to cry about compilation videos and be like the trolls are coming to get me when he's funding people that are fucking with you? That's that. Exactly. You know what? We're of the no same pay, mind no, on this no, one. No fucking pity. Fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Wings was like, Woody, I feel like you're making me choose between you and him. This, to me, is perhaps the most irredeemable thing about him. These are his co-hosts, and he's financially supporting somebody attacking one of their family. And what excuse does he offer up to it? What is his explanation for why he did that? Thunder comes to me and goes, hey, man, I need, I, I need help with my channel. Could you help me? So I helped him. I gave him a, I gave him some advice about algorithm, and his channel went up. Next thing I know, I'm confronted by Woody for helping somebody that made fun of his child. I'm like, that has nothing to do with me. I can be friends with both of you, and you two can be disagreeing. Why won't Woody do a show with me? Maybe because you paid the guy that's attacking his fucking kid, you piece of shit. Maybe that's got a part to play in it. I'd walk away from that. I don't imagine many people would stick around for a friend like that. Your inability to commit, your ungratefulness, and your financially supporting somebody attacking the families of your co-hosts is a, a pretty good reason to see that you'd be leaving the show, that that would be the end of it. But if you think he treats his friends badly, you should see how he interacts with his own fan base. You're worthless because, like, I don't give a shit if you watch or not. You're not worth any money to me. A content creator's relationship with their own audience is equal to, if not more important than, the things that they produce. Your viewership, your fan base, is what carries you forward. It's what helps to expand your channel and bring in financial success. But there is a threshold that some people unintentionally and sometimes intentionally cross. A point where they begin to see their fan base less as people that appreciate what they're putting out and more as a solution to their financial problems. It's the point at which the positive comment, the like and the share, the expanding of the community is no longer sufficient enough, where the content creator wants more out of the people that are watching them, where they're viewed less as individuals and more as a living wallet, or as the Findom community would put it, a pay pig. And you know what? If you know what's good for you, guess what? You're going to go to my fucking Amazon. That's right. That's right, you fucking pay pig. That's right. You, I'm talking to you. That's right, my little fucking pay piggy. This helps to create a cycle of alienation, a self-feeding loop that grows larger and larger, where a content creator turns on their audience. The audience then turns to trolling and retaliation. That trolling leads to more aberrant behavior, and that aberrant behavior alienates the audience even more. And as the cycle continues to spin around and around and around again, that particular YouTuber begins to lose a grip on reality. They stop seeing the situation for what it is and begin to attribute all sorts of meanings to it, all of which are further and further from the actual truth. And you can see this play itself out quite frequently with Wings. Now, he may tell you he's not bitch-made. As much as people want to say, talk about Jordy, I ain't got no bitch in my blood. I got zero bitch in my blood. Zero. But for a man that's 0% bitch, ain't got no bitch in my blood, he sure likes to cry a lot. Let me know how many people I actually have that actually want to see me here. I want people that actually care about me being in the fucking channel. I want people making YouTube videos and fucking Twitch videos to fucking stop, man. I hate waking up every day wondering if I have a fucking job. It's fucking terrible. 
I hate my fucking face cam because shit like this happens and this is gonna be on fucking YouTube and Twitch too. He likes to complain a lot. Like seriously, I'm fucking over stressed out like a motherfucker and people just keep doing this shit. Now, be why am I always fucking mad 24-7 when I have people like this just fucking with me? This is my job, man. This is how I put food on the table. Leave me alone. I cry because it hurts my fucking feelings, dude. I'm so... I don't think you understand how stressed I get about this Twitch and this YouTube and this troll shit. Like, my stomach hurts from just stressing about it. No, I'm not fucking fake crying. I almost cried right there. He likes to play you the song of his people. I hate coming here. I hate coming to fucking do this shit and get 15,000 people ask me about my weight and remind me how big of a failure I am. My life sucks, man. It does. I'm scared. Get all people to just fuck with me. And why does he find himself in this situation? Well, it's those goddamn trolls, the people that are harassing him online. Report every video that you see. Like, honestly, every time you click on one of those videos, just report them. If I, if I had 300 people report all every video 300 times, those channels would be took down. Be those down. channels would be took down. I don't know why, I, right, I, I don't know why the trolls keep harping on it. Like, that doesn't bother me one bit. Like I said, I'm not smelling my hand either. Like, I touch my nose all the time because it's a twitch. I'm not smelling it. At all. Ran the fuck out of there. <laughs> oh, I you almost caught me- out. Hey, Jordy, I almost caught me a wild ash today, man. Fuck. A loud ash? If somebody could please, like, get me their information. Like, maybe, like, um, I forgot what that shit's called. But... Like, uh, if, if somebody could get me, like, their information, like, their name, their address, the number, how I can get in contact with these guys, I would really like to know because, like, I'm seriously considering um, suing them. And even more than that, it's the unappreciative fans who aren't being good enough little pay pigs and taking care of his needs first. Fuck the content. I hate making the content. I want the goddamn money. Well, Tangie, stop showing up for fucking Call of Duty. The only reason I stream Call of Duty is when I when I'm at the point where I need the when I need subscribers. I don't play this game for fun. I don't give a fuck about Call of Duty. Like I hate Call of Duty. I fucking hate it. Dude. I, it fucking ruined my life. I hate everything about it. A band niche, please. I don't give a fuck if I finish one game or not, dude. Please just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. I hate Call of Duty. I don't like playing this shit. I don't want to play Rainbow. I don't want to play Call of Duty. There's exactly no games I want to play at this point. Shock Steve. All right. Shock Steve. Here it is. I'm going to download Fortnite, Shock Steve. If I don't reach 520 subscribers within two hours, I'm perma banning you. And so you can see the loop play itself out. Wings hates the content that he makes, but he feels it's the only way to bring in viewers. The viewers show up to watch him freak out. He freaks out and gets angry. That makes more viewers turn to trolling, which just continually escalates the situation. And what does he need all that money for? Well, obviously, all the broken controllers. Banned Super Han. Fuck you! Fuck you! Can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man.
Is it any wonder then, with temper tantrums like that on display, with him freaking out on a daily basis on his Twitch live streams, that trolls have begun to congregate around him? It's reached the point where there is a booming business and doing compilations of Wings freakouts, with multiple channels popping up to catalog his every fuck up and breakdown. Because deep down, people love a good dumpster fire. Nobody likes you. An entire fucking industry has spawned hating on Wings of Redemption. The Wings of Redemption is exactly like a NASCAR driver that crashes every weekend and thinks that people come out because of his driving skills. No wings. <laughs> people aren't watching you because you're good at gaming. People aren't watching you because you're charismatic. People are watching you because it is a new and fascinating thing for them to see a fucking 32-year-old going on 500 pounds, failure to launch man baby, cry about dying in video games, and deflecting it as if it was someone else's fault. And that inferno has been burning for years. Take, for example, his match with Syndicate, somebody else from the Call of Duty community. The guy is known for being the best Call of Duty Zombies player on the planet. And his, his YouTube channel is kind of skyrocketing, largely because he's so good at Call of Duty Zombies. Six years ago, Woody. <laughs> Six years ago, thank you. Yeah. Um, what Wings doesn't realize is that he's actually good at the multiplayer version of Call of Duty as well. That's what he did before he got famous. Anyway, during the show, for hours and hours, Wings is wildly disrespectful to this guy. Just shutting him down, acting like he's not a gamer, like, you know, just... He says that he'd be much better at zombies on his first game. He doesn't even play zombies, but if he were to, he'd be much better than the, the best player on the planet. He challenges him to a 1v1 on Bog. Nobody on the trash pile. Uh-oh, Wings knows where he is. Does Syndicate know where he is? Game on! Syndicate gets the shots on target. 6-3 to three, Syndicate. Now, a thing you need to know about Wings is his style of gameplay. He's actually very, very good at these across the map sort of accuracy based thing you know where where we're both behind cover we both have two or three pixels to aim at that is wings cup of tea that's what he's strong mm -hmm. at so he sets the rules up and he says we have to use m16 it has to be on bog it has to be he lays it all out there so it's to his advantage dude he's just fucking hiding look i'm looking at the fucking map right now where's he at oh i see him i see him He's not hiding, he's looking for you. I'm standing on the fucking open. He, he can't see this because he's too busy laying on his belly half the time. That's not true. Like, we can all see what he's doing. He's, he's hunting for you. He gets behind, which means that he has to start taking some risks you know, to catch up. And that just leads to being further behind. And eventually, he throws the controller, rages, and blames me for streaming it. I'm, I broke my controller. You broke your controller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep fucking laughing, you fucking faggot. Fuck! Why the fuck you stream that shit? It was your idea. Please, please cancel the stream. It's just me playing, Wings. I don't give a fuck. Please cancel the stream. I do not want to hear these fuckers talk. Wings gets salty enough if you remind him of his shit-talking to Syndicate. He gets upset enough if you remind him of his loss to Syndicate. He gets even madder if you remind him of the fact that he wanted Syndicate to throw a money match, a rematch, and make it look like he was the superior player. A little time passes and like Keemstar gets involved in this. Keemstar was always uh, opportunistic about um, when he found drama. And he's like, we'll set up a 1v1 with you guys. We'll put, I forget what it was, like $5,000 on the line. And, uh, and then winner take all. And jo Wings came to him and said, look, we'll do this. We'll do a 1v1. You throw it. You, uh, look, I'm going to win anyway because I'm Wings of Redemption. But, but you throw it just to lock that in. And then I'll keep, I think, what did he want the split to be? It was to his see, see, that's the best part. Wings would keep the lion's share and get the victory. But what really pisses him off is when you mention Keemstar. I don't like Keemstar. I wish he would get in a car wreck. I literally do. I wish he's the only person I could think of right now I wish would literally die. Dude. Mods, please do your fucking job. Get rid of these people talking about Keemstar. There is no love loss between the two. In fact, they had a stream where they debated some of the issues, and you can see Wings trying to struggle through it. Okay, so I was going to do a game with you. I told you that I wanted money from you to know that you're serious, that would put be put towards the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you were obviously, you said you were going to get 15% of the game, mm -hmm. and uh, that's part of the reasons why I deserve to die. No, no, no. That's just, like I said, that's the first bullet point. You tried 
you tried to, you know, swindle me and Woody out money because that game never came to effect. How were we going to get our hold, money back? Hold, hold, hold up, you didn't you didn't give me any money. I, we we so did we you, didn't because you, I wasn't you, going to. But but like you're you're, you're so you holding swindle. You weren't swindled. And second of all, I just want to let you know I just came out with a game app. Right, a couple months. This ago was after Fortress Craft. This is right after Fortress Craft. Two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I've I've made a lot of money on games. Right. You know, but like horrible Keemstar, the the genius business guy tried to get Wings some money, tried to give him a business opportunity, right? And you were going after that guy who camps, who did nothing to you and said nothing to you. So I defended him, and I thought you sh you deserved a taste of your own medicine. That's what the FAG was all about, bullying the bullies. And you were quite the bully back in the day, Wings. You you sat there, you, you said her hope that I died in, to, in 2014. I mean, what? I don't remember. I don't, what do you want me to say to that? I you mean, hoped the, I would die in 2014. What do you want me to say to that? I don't remember any of this. Right, I wouldn't remember this right here unless people blew out proportion. You know what I thought? A little bit more. You give me a little bit more, like, uh, you know, backstory? No, let me go find the video. <laughs> What's happening? I saw the clip! <laughs> okay, so I tweeted you a joke. I said, you're a lot like your channel. Large no wings, and slowly you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> That's a joke! That's funny, Wings! That's funny! That's not... Oh, Wings should die. That's a fucking joke. In fact, Wings got so angry at Keemstar, he tried to intimidate him through doxing him and his loved ones. All right. Well, I got your DJ Keemstar. I've run some stuff by you. Is your P.O. Box 148 Holland? That's Zero? correct. That's correct. Is your street address not? York 140809. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. Right. I, don't, I don't give my, my personal where I live at. I'll give that out. Is your girlfriend named Melissa or? Yes, she is. Is her phone number 71663? Okay, can I ask you why you're trying to get my personal information? Well, I'm just I'm just I'm just trying to see how much of this is correct because I I gave some of this information to Fisticuffs. You gave you gave my personal information to Fisticuffs? Yep. Okay, so should I find out what trailer park you live in and announce that to the world? I don't live in a trailer park, my man. Wait, wait, <laughs> so what, 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 was motive, what was the motivation behind this action? Oh, uh, this is, um, well, basically, I did some digging, and I tried to find everything I could find out about it. I'm just letting like, him know that. I'm just letting him know it's out there, and uh, that dude, way he won't be surprised. Do you know how many people, do you know, you know how many people threaten me a day? It's like, I, I know that you're a bully and that you get off on bullying people. But, like, I'm one person that is just going to constantly have that middle finger in the air. It's never going to go down. It's always going to be, fuck you. No one is ever going to fucking talk me into submission or anything. So, whatever you're trying to do, just stop now. Because the middle no, finger is right anything. here. I'm letting you know that I'm I did give away from your I'm not intimidated in any way. I'm not trying to intimidate yes, you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Trying to say my girlfriend's name. Trying to say no. where I live, what no. my P.O. box is. I just want you to know, it's always up, dude. My, the bird is flying right now. But unlike him jumping up and down, this had zero impact. No Richter scales went off. Keemstar brushed it away as if it was a non-threat. And so it becomes just another example in a long list of growing complaints about how Wings behaves, how he interacts with his friends, how he interacts with his fans, and how he interacts with the community at large. Look here, listen, look, look, listen. Look here, look here, look, listen. The road toward success is an arduous one, but the trip back down it is even more difficult. To come to the realization that your time is over, that you've had your limelight and that's passed you by, can be a difficult one for a YouTuber to come to grips with. Some desperately seek to cling on to a fraction of what they once had, continuing on as if nothing had changed, hoping for the best but not really preparing for the inevitable. Others find a way out. They begin to develop a fully fulfilled life of having a family, owning a house, and getting a job that's much more stable. But then there are people like Wings of Redemption. It's uncertain exactly where Wings will be a year from now, or even two years from now. But wherever that destination may well take him, it's a trip that Wings embarked on himself. It's his own actions and behaviors, the path that he took on the internet, that led him to where he is now and where he's going to end up. His interaction with people and his dependency on them 
all helping to fuel his own self-imposed nightmare of believing that he needs to produce a certain kind of content to make any money at all. And the bitterness and hatred he feels for that being his lot in life, for that being the position he finds himself in. He is a man that found himself in the land of milk and honey of internet stardom that now resides in a fetid rot.